If your mother-daughter relationship is, well, say, complicated, today's program is for you. We're going to talk about how to find common ground and how to mend that relationship. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm glad that you could join us for Bridges today. So. We are going to talk about a lot of really important things today, and one is how to mend that mother-daughter relationship that can be so messy and so complicated. So we have today as my guest, mother-daughter, but they bring some really, not only their personal experience, but some special expertise. And so Blythe, I want to welcome you today. Thank you so much, Good Monica. to have you. Thank you. And Helen McIntosh, is that how I say That's it? That's right. Also known as Dr. Helen. Thank you. Good to have you today. It's so, great to be here. I'm especially excited, Blythe, to have mother daughter, and you've been in the publishing industry for years, and and, and you're a daughter and an author <laughs> and all of that. So why the book? It's called Mended. You know, we started talking about um, the things that we had learned as mother and daughter, and we said, you know, maybe some of the things that we've gone through would be helpful for others, mm -hmm. um, because we just had had people come to us and say, you know, how do you all have a good relationship? And we've told them this, that <laughs> it's because we have worked hard to get it to that place mm -hmm. and we haven't always gotten everything right together. Uh -huh. Like we, we've needed to work on our relationship just like other mothers and daughters. So we, we thought about how could we put this into something that would be encouraging but would, off, would offer truth and practical ways for women to draw closer to each other. And so that's really where the book came from, out of a desire to help a re be a resource for other women yeah. um, to have with their mothers or their daughters or both even. Yeah. And I just love that you both as mother and daughter are sharing your experiences, but really professional expertise as well, you know, which I think is so important and such a powerful combination. So Dr. Helen, <laughs> as I understand it, you and your mom, there, there were just really a... It was difficult. Difficult. What was it like for you, Dr. Helen? It was really hard. I think that's the reason that I went into psychology, because it was just such a difficult time. It'd be good and then horrible, and good and then horrible. And I just was always trying to figure it out. I, it was it was a difficult season mm -hmm. from early years to to when she passed away in uh, 1998 so um, the things I learned though were invaluable and <clears throat> we feel free to discuss mom because she always wanted her life to matter and for her to be able to help others I mean in retrospect she had so many difficult issues. She had depression and anxiety, a lot of other issues that she projected onto me, but they were really, it was her anger at herself that was the driving force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the case with so many of us. You know, you have obviously experience as a daughter, as a mom, <laughs> as a psychologist, and probably really were at least somewhat led into psychology because of what you experienced in your life and how to deal with that. And I think, Blythe, that's one of the things that you two both talk about in the book is that sometimes we can, without meaning to, uh, project onto our daughter what we're mad at ourselves about or what we couldn't reconcile. Mm -hmm. Could you speak to that? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes we want to see um, our daughter um, make a choice that we wish we would have made at mm -hmm. that age or we wish that they would do things the way we want them to do <laughs> things and so it's easy to try and help you know try to help them make those decisions and really our job is to lead them to make God filled choices and you know mom and I've discovered that the way to sometimes um, help guide um, a family member is to ask powerful questions. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what we share in our book, Mended, are these life-giving, inviting questions. Um, we call them conversation starters. Mom calls them relationship starters, which I think is so beautiful mm -hmm. because really the heart is, is to not want to project onto others. We don't, we don't want to have a heart that tells others what to do. We want to invite them into seeking the answers and asking God those questions. Um, and so we can be an initiator of good questions, which I think can help take away some of this. Well, you should do this and you should have done that. 
um, if, if we could say, what would you do differently or what do you think we ought to do in this situation? It takes out some of that hostility mm -hmm. and, and really allows them to make those choices without it coming from us. Right, yeah. and I think, you know, I know for me, if somebody is like just blaming me or accusing me and especially mm -hmm. if it's from a family member, I feel backed into a corner. So I'm really less likely to answer or I'll respond with anger mm -hmm. instead of having a conversation. So you call them relationship starters? <laughs> oh, well, yes, um, mothers and daughters and, and really all relationships can get stuck in a place. And we are really hoping that these sentence starters that we've put in the book will help people move from the present into the future. Mm -hmm. um, we feel as if the the attention is on the relationship and not the person. So this is not about changing the person that you are having a difficult relationship with, but instead changing the relationship. And instead of going back and going, well, you should have done this and why'd you do that? We just start from that mm -hmm. present moment and the, an example of the sentence would be, you know, I want a great relationship. Um, what do you think that we need to do to make things better? And it's just an open-end um, assistance to moving <clears throat> forward. It's quite simple. And families are so relieved that they don't have to go back and fix all the things, the many years and generations of mess, yeah. but to move forward it feels so right. Yeah, it's be, good. Because there's nothing good back there typically, you right. know, because there are so many times I can look at the relationship with my mom or with another family member, and if I'm focused on the past, and if I'm focused on that I need to be right or need to be vindicated, I mean, it doesn't go the conversation does not go anywhere. It just gets heated, <laughs> and then there's right. more of a distance. So the name of the book today is Mended, and it is written by a mother-daughter duo, Blythe Daniel and Helen McIntosh. And so, Blythe, we're talking about how, how can a mom and a daughter that are estranged or maybe the relationship is fractured, uh, how do you find common ground? Mm -hmm. what, what do you do to get to that place? You know, I think one of the first steps that we would encourage um, a mom or a daughter to do is go back to those things that they know that they have commonality with their mom or daughter. It might be um, getting together over a, a, at a specific restaurant or it might be um, a, an occasion that you've celebrated in the past and that you just initiate. I think that's the key thing is to, instead of looking at all the things that you're disagreeing on, that the relationship comes first. And so you look at the things that you have common ground over. It might be grandchildren is that common ground. And so setting some safe parameters over a gathering or a conversation, it might be that you both um, now have cell phones with text and that text might be a safe way to find um, some conversation beginnings with, with the loved one. So really, I think sometimes we feel like we have more uncommon with um, a loved one because we're, we're disagreeing and, um, and we, we have different opinions. And so what we want to say and what we're encouraging women to think about is that if you find one area, one activity, one way to communicate that no matter what else you may disagree on, that the relationship is most important. And, and so finding that common ground um, is really a first step towards it being mended together, towards restoring the relationship. And you don't, um, as mom said, you don't have to try and figure everything out, but you are choosing one area to focus on. And really that might even bring up the issue that you wanna address with each other. And so you're just gonna focus on one issue, not 10. <laughs> right, because well, right, it gets to be too much to handle when yes. you've got a list this long, and they might all be legitimate items that right. maybe at some point need some time, mm -hmm. attention, and care, but we can't do all of that right. today. Is that kind of what you're yeah, saying? Exactly. Yes. yes, because it feels very um, weighted. The relationship feels like I've got to do all this and manage all this. When you know Jesus came that we would have life and mm -hmm. that we would have it abundantly, and He tells us that. And so, what we want to do is breathe new life into relationships. And and we do believe that you know 
that as children of God, that God delights in relationships. He created us for each other. He knew that mom would be my mom, and he knew that her mom would be her mom, yeah. even though that was difficult. And so we don't often get to ask the question, why is this the relationship I have with a mother or a daughter? I, don't, I didn't ask for this, but we know that you know God has given us that person in our life, and we're in a role to speak life into them, even if they aren't doing that to us. And I think mm -hmm. that sometimes it feels like it should be reciprocal, yeah. that we should be loving each other well and sometimes it doesn't go that way mm -hmm. but we are still responsible for our our choices and our thoughts and our actions toward that other person regardless of whether they reciprocate yeah exactly yeah. it can be easy to get stuck there trying to get somebody to reciprocate when they can't or maybe they won't Wh what about dr. Helen what about someone who looks at her life and says you know it's too late for me you know, my mom has already passed, and so there was so much upheaval, so much, uh, so many heartbreaks between us. What do you say to that woman? You know, I would, um, after listening to her story, because I don't want to ever shut off compassion, and mm -hmm. so um, I trust I would listen well. And then I would say, you know, it is not too late to restore your own heart, mm -hmm. and if if that one has other people in her life, she can set a new standard and, and make sure that some of the unhealthy patterns are not repeated because there's a legacy going on and it's a legacy for good or for bad. Right. And um, we want to help them make a, a, good, a good stab at it. So yeah. I would just encourage that one to build the healthy things, to look for that. I love the verse. Uh, I think it's Ephesians six thirteen after the armor that says, and having done all to stand. And I love that principle that you do all that you know to do, but at, the, at some point you stand. Mm -hmm. And we wanna share this book with others because we don't want people to have regrets about not trying. Mm -hmm. But once someone is deceased, you have to rest that you did all that you could do. Yes. And and that if there are any misgivings, you know, to take them to the Father, and He will say, oh, my child, I forgive you. That's right, that's right, because <laughs> it's never too late. Right, and you know, sometimes what we've encouraged women to do is to, is to write a letter to their mom as if they were gonna hand yeah. it to their mom, um, and, and really say those things that you didn't get to say, and really speaking those things brings some healing as you're saying those things and writing those things that you go before God and, and even express that this is what I would have said. Mm -hmm. And there can be a lot of healing through, and you know, mom as a counselor has really helped people to be able to put words out there that they may have not have gotten to speak to their mom. And you know, mom even didn't get to have complete repair with her mom like she would have wanted to, but yet she's gone on and she knows that the God's given her such a such a heart of compassion, even when she wasn't asked for, for forgiveness, and so um, so sometimes we do it for our own hearts, whether the person is in our life. But a letter can certainly help that yeah. we write that out. Yeah, Good. I loved that comment of being able to restore our heart, that our hearts are restored even if our mom has passed on, because if we're healed, then we don't have to keep passing that on to future generations. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to take a, a deeper look into this book entitled Mended. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we're taking a look at sometimes what can be a very complicated relationship. And that's a relationship between a mother and her daughter. And so 
especially if that relationship is really broken and there are places of hurt, we want to encourage you that you don't have to stay stuck there. There is hope. And we're taking a look into a book called Mended, and it is written by a mother and a daughter, Blythe Daniel and Helen McIntosh. And so we've been talking about many things, Blythe and Dr. Helen, about just the complexity of that relationship and how to move forward and find common ground. And I want to ask this about disagreement because the thing is my opinion here is that we're never going to totally agree with other people or even family members completely but sometimes people feel like they have to do that mm -hmm. what do we do with disagreement mm -hmm. you know it's great that you're naming it because i do think that's so important for families to recognize that they don't always agree mm -hmm. especially mothers and daughters you know, it's interesting because a mother-daughter relationship is a primary relationship, and the daughter often looks like the mom, mm -hmm. um, acts like the mom, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know I've had some characteristics, and I see it in my own daughters, and mm -hmm. I and I, and it's great to be able to say, we don't necessarily agree on this, but we love each other regardless, mm -hmm. or I'm going to put the relationship ahead of our differences of opinion. So to name it is so helpful. And, you know, at the end of the day, where I have really struggled with um, being a mom and wanting wanting my children to make decisions, especially my daughters, if I've seen them stray in an area where I felt like I, you know, I would like for you to make a different choice, is that at the end of the day, my daughters are still my daughters, whether they make the choices that I would want them to. Mm -hmm. And so where I have tried to insert my opinion um, hasn't gone well, and I end up asking them for forgiveness. But, but the relationship really is more important yeah. than what what you disagree on because typically that issue is probably going to re is resolve itself and then another one will come up but the pattern mm -hmm. is um, but the relationship is what they'll remember that that pattern of differences might come and go but mm -hmm. the relationship will last yeah. forever hopefully and yeah. I think that that's something that's so important we're talking about the disagreement and that we're not going to agree with people all the time especially those that are close to us but this forgiveness piece some people have a very hard time forgiving. Let's talk mm -hmm. about forgiveness and what that looks like. Yeah, um, I would love to take that. Sure. The um, forgiveness is, I think the most familiar prayer of asking forgiveness is the one we ask when we invite Christ into our lives mm -hmm. and we ask him to forgive us and for the things that we have done. And so that's number one. Number two would be um, dealing with someone that we have offended, going to them and knowing that we need to ask their forgiveness. But the hardest is number three that we mm. describe in the book, and that is when uh, we, uh, when someone has offended us, but ha they haven't come to us, and mm. we're left bleeding. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, what we've added into our book is the encouragement to, to uh, go seize that opportunity and to ask their forgiveness. Because who is in a better, stronger place to ask forgiveness than someone who hasn't done so much? In other words, let's say that they have done 95% of the mm -hmm. problem and you've only done five, <laughs> but you're in the stronger position to initiate forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So it may sound radical, but it is so healthy and so good. Yeah. And clearing our own account is just powerful. Yes, it so is. So Blythe and I uh, have in the book that we recommend that people, the, the first sentence is, um, I was wrong to and then you fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. The second uh, phrase is, I am so sorry. Mm -hmm. And the third phrase is, will you forgive me? And getting a response for them. Have you ever been in a tangle and so somebody just said, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and you're still left bleeding? <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, or, I mean, it's just much more complete when you can say, I was wrong to do this and I am sorry, and will you forgive me? It's just a complete package, mm -hmm. so we it encourage It really that. is, it really is, and there's just something wonderful about when we do that, and the person says, yes, I will forgive you. Yeah. Yep. You know, there's something really healing, it completes that circle. What if life, the person mm -hmm. won't forgive us? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about, and with each other, that 
really our responsibility is to initiate the, the forgiveness. And if they don't, then um, we still will say, you know, um, I, I recognize that this is difficult for you. Um, I still desire a relationship with you, or you still affirm the person whether they've chosen to forgive you. Um, you know, and you keep that relationship as solid as you can, even if there's a rift between you, you still wanna keep the door open because they're watching you and they may come back to you at some point and they would even say, I'm sorry that I didn't offer forgiveness or I'm sorry that I didn't receive what you had for me, or they may not. But, um, but we want to focus on the fact that we have, have done our part. We've mm -hmm. released them and we've released the unforgiveness and we don't harbor that in our hearts. And so I think it's important to know that when we don't release um, forgiveness to someone that's hurt us, it, it breeds toxicity in our bodies yes, and it, it, does. it affects our health. It affects our mm -hmm. other relationships. You know, really? when we hold on to something, it might come out at a spouse or a mm -hmm. sister or, and it might not even be to that person. It might come out in other ways. And so um, we really are the prisoners when we hold right. on to unforgiveness, right. not the person that has hurt us. And so, yeah, you know, we, we do offer it. And sometimes we'll even need to go back to that person and say, I choose to forgive you if they haven't asked us, it's power in being able to acknowledge that there's something between you, but that you're releasing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Because the alternative is that it builds up inside of us. And yep. it does cause all kinds of problems, as you said. Health problems could be mental health, physical health, all of that is going on. And I love, Dr. Helen, that you said uh, that we should be the one to initiate. And I always think that, I always say to people, the best person goes first. That's why Jesus went first, <laughs> right? Great. He offered yeah. us forgiveness before I was ever even a position to know that I needed forgiveness. But he went first and he paved the way. And I think when we talk about our family relationships and this mother-daughter bond, you know, the consequence of the result is if we don't, we're gonna keep passing this on in our family mm -hmm. and these patterns are going to continue. And that's really a shame. It, yes. it really makes it difficult for your children and their children to understand why they are how they are. You know, have you ever heard, you know, children say, I just don't know why I'm this way. <laughs> well, they, they probably don't, but it could be a generational pattern that we mm -hmm. want to break up those generational patterns. We, we can't help the families that we've been born into, but we mm -hmm. can be, um, restores and initiators of peace and love into the families that we're building. And so really above everything else that we would want is that we want families to be restored. Mm -hmm. um, we know that um, society and culture really is um, coming up against the traditional families. And mm -hmm. so yes, of course, if there's an opportunity for there to be disruption between even mothers and daughters who are often the caregivers of the family, yes. the ones that offer hope and offer love, um, then, then of course the enemy wants to to take advantage of that. And so what we want to say to women is that no matter where you have been in your relationship with your mother or with your daughter, that it's oh, it's time for you to stand and it's time for you to take into your own hands what you can control and not trying to control the person, but you right. have authority in your homes to be able to say, we're not going to operate like that anymore. We're going to, we're going to create an atmosphere of love and of forgiveness. Yeah, that's right. right. And that's really powerful. The name of the book again is Mended and it is written by mother and daughter, Blythe Daniel and Helen McIntosh. And so what we're really talking about is really operating from a position of strength. Because I think that unforgiveness and this breakdown of the family really leaves us incredibly vulnerable. And what I hear you saying Blythe is that we can kind of step up to the plate so to speak and say, okay, I can't really control what's happened before me, and I can't necessarily fix my mom or fix my daughter, but I can look at my own heart and here's what I need to do and here's what I need to say. Is that right? That's right. And you know, um, I think that there are many women in, that have felt like, I don't know what to do. I've tried some of the things that you've mm -hmm. shared with me yeah. and wh what do I do? And, and we would just say, continue making good choices. Continue being responsible for only your heart and only your words. We can't be responsible for what someone else says or thinks. Um, but we can be responsible for our own hearts. And really, if there's frustration that you continually experience is to take that to God and to just say, God, I'm praying for this person. I don't know what to do from a human standpoint, but I know that you can. And to never give up thinking that God could restore. We've known many stories and have talked to so many <laughs> women who have been restored and God's used so many things to bring them back together. 
and it set a new course in their relationship, which will continue. But they, you know, they would say we probably got to a point we didn't think things could be good again. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage women to know that that it can, that God really is a restorer. And we don't we don't say that without promise. There's so many scriptures that we relate to that God tells us that He is a restorer of the breach in families, which really the book came from Isaiah, which talks about. Um, the breach that has been restored in, in Isaiah's time. So it was massive upheaval. Mm-hmm. And, and think about how God did go in and restore a whole generation. And so this is something God's been doing for generations. Mm-hmm. We just haven't pr- maybe always thought about it or seen it. And that's really what we're hoping yeah. you know, we'll see. Because I think sometimes we don't think of it as, as personal. You know, that there is something I can do. Like I can't <sighs> fix everything but I can make the right choice today. I can do the next right thing instead of just thinking about, well, this relationship has just deteriorated to such an awful point. There's nothing good that can come of it. What would you say, Dr. Helen, Thank you know, you. As, a, as a mom, as a daughter, and as a counselor as well? A word picture I love sharing with families and with clients is, um, two bumped cups, well, two cups that bump. And I, I, I keep usually some plastic glasses um, nearby and draw a heart mm-hmm. on each cup. And when they bump, what is inside each cup is what comes out. And that is uh, meant to be a help when th- the thought comes up or the accusation might come up that, um, it's all your fault. In other words, <laughs> I have, my mother used to say, I am so angry and it is your fault. Uh-huh. And, you know, we're only responsible for what comes out of our own cup. Mm. And it's a boundary. It's a visual for knowing what you're responsible for and what the other person is responsible for. But we have language in the book even for that. Um, Life and I are so happy. I guess we have several dozen sentences to help people know what to say when they don't know what to say. Exactly, because we and need that help when it gets really <laughs> rough. We do. And that's one of the moments when somebody is having a meltdown. And um, so a sentence to someone like that would be, um, I, I see your anger and I, I I hope maybe we can still move forward in our attempt to mm-hmm. build our relationship and uh, it's just healthy, healthy. Yes. Well, I want to thank you both for coming today. Thank you for writing the book and for sharing with us personally and from your expertise as well. It's been good to have you here today. It's a thank pleasure. You. Thanks for watching Bridges. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615 754 0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. 